September 3rd. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 10, 27-28 As God's man mediator, Christ is able to keep his people as the covenant head and preserver of his church. It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. The Father knew what his beloved family would need. He knew what corruptions would threaten them, what temptations would beguile them, what foes would assail them, what infirmities would encompass them, and what the trials would depress them. Therefore it pleased him. It was his own good and gracious pleasure that in his Son, the mediator of his beloved people, should all fullness dwell, a fullness of merit, a fullness of pardon, a fullness of righteousness, a fullness of grace, wisdom, and strength, commiserate with the varied, multiplied, and diversified circumstances of his family. It is all fullness. As the mediator, then, of his people, he keeps them in perfect safety by night and by day. No man, no power can pluck them out of his hands. He has undertaken their full salvation, to die for their sins and to rise again for their justification, and yet not to provide for their security while traveling through a world of sin and temptation, to leave them to their own guardianship and unprotected prey to their own heart's corruptions. The mechanizations of Satan and the power of worldly entanglement would have been but a partial salvation of his people. Opposed by a threefold enemy, Satan and the world in league with their own imperfectly renewed and sanctified hearts, that treacherous foe dwelling within the camp, ever ready to betray the soul to the hands of its enemies. How could a poor, weak child of God bear up and breast this powerful phalanx? But he, who was mighty to save, is mighty to keep. In him provision is made for all the trying, intricate, perilous circumstances in which the believer may be placed. Grace is laid up for the subjection of every inbred corruption, and armor is provided for every assault of the foe. Wisdom, strength, consolation, sympathy, kindness, all, all that the poor believing sinner can possibly require is richly stored in Jesus, the covenant head of all the fullness of God to his people. But how is the child of God to avail himself of this provision? The simple but glorious life of faith exhibits itself here. By faith, the believer travels up to this rich and ample supply. By faith, he takes his nothingness to Christ's all-sufficiency. By faith, he takes his unworthiness to Christ's infinite merit. By faith, he takes his weakness to Christ's strength, his folly to Christ's wisdom, his fearful heart, his timid spirit, his nervous frame, his doubtful mind, his beclouded evidences, his rebellious will, his powerful cross, his peculiar case of whatever nature it may be, and the way of believing, the exercise of simple faith, he goes with it to Jesus. And as an empty vessel hangs himself upon that nail fastened in a sure place, the glorious Elohim of whom is hung all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the issue, all vessels of small quantity from the vessels of cups, even to all the vessels of flagons. Thus may the weakest believer, the most severely assailed, the most deeply tried, the most powerfully tempted, lay as Goliath dead at his feet, by simple faith's dealing with the fullness that is in Christ Jesus. Oh, how mighty is the believer who, in deep distrust of his own power, casting off from him all spirit of self-dependence, looks simply 
and fully at Jesus and goes forth to meet his enemy, only as he is strong in the strength that is in Christ.